I'm late. I hope you can see me. I just set up my uh, phone on the tripod. So here is my completed uh, Gilded Age ball gown for the Biltmore Masquerade. John? John? Can you just tell me, can you just come and look and make sure everybody can see me? Because I set it on the tripod and I, I just want to make sure I'm in the picture. So here is my masquerade mask. I guess I should put that on, right? Yeah, you're in the picture. Well, how can you tell? Oh, you're seeing me. <laughs> okay. Can you tie this for me? I can't tie it. <laughs> I suppose I need to wear my mask. <laughs> okay. How's that? Good. All right. As promised, here I am, everyone. And I'm wearing my um, beautiful uh, lilac and gold uh, Gilded Age masquerade gown. Um, this dress has many pieces. Um, I need to move over a little. Okay. Well, I, I should, I'm going to walk into it so they can see the, the train. So, um, the, right there? Okay. So the horsehair, um, the horsehair braid, uh, I put in the skirt. I actually put it in the lining of the skirt. Four inch thick, um, stiff horsehair braid. It seems to have worked really well because as you can see, the, the train is moving nicely. I can't move around too much because of the camera. But um, it was just the trick that I needed because before I did that, the skirt was kind of collapsing into itself because it's so big. So um, I'm gonna pick up the camera again in just a minute. Uh, I can't see your comments or anything yet. Uh, but I wanted to show you the dress full length and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. And so I guess now I'll pick up the phone and um, chat with y'all. So here I am. <laughs> Do you think the mask works? I didn't get the tiara yet, so I just put one of the flowers in my hair. Uh, I thought that worked. Uh, I ordered the tiara and it shipped. Oh, I do like this mask. This is the first time I've seen it. Just now is the first time I've seen it all together. I have not put this dress on except for the test fit. Uh, so this is the first time I've put it on. So um, the tiara shipped today. It might be too much with the mask. So I might have to choose one or the other. Given that it's a masquerade, I probably should wear the mask. Um, but when I wear it again, I might just wear the tiara. Maybe I'll put the flower in the tiara. I don't know. And I have feathers coming too. So I, I just got a little bit of everything and, uh, we'll see if I use the rest. Hey, Sherry. Hey, Carol. Hey, Lori. Hey, Larilyn. And Lori number two. I've got two Lori's and Elizabeth and babe. And my hubby was watching and Libby. And Carol, Denise, um, Lori, the dress fits you so well. Thank you. And the mask takes the outfit over the top. I think the mask really worked. Um, I was very disappointed with the one that I ordered online. So I happen to have two masks, gray masks. This was just plain gold. I mean, it had this little bit of braid on the bottom, but it was just gold. And I had these flowers left over from another dress. These flowers are actually from Heather McCollum's dress. Um, that I had saved them because I thought they were pretty and, and they made good appliques. So uh, I saw them and I thought, wow, that would work on the mask. So I glued them on the mask and I changed out the ribbon to purple ribbon and voila, c'est fini. Uh, okay, and Mary, Amanda, Kathy, thank you again about the mask. Uh, Carol, it comes together so perfectly. I think the Tiara will contribute, I'm sure. We'll see when it comes. It's It looked really pretty. It's very delicate looking, um, so I really, really liked it. it. It looked like it would suit me pretty well. So, as I said, if I don't wear it to the masquerade, I'll, I'll probably wear, the, well, I know I'll wear this dress again. I'll take it with me to HRR, Historical Romance Retreat. 
So I will definitely wear the tiara then if I don't wear it for the masquerade. Uh, Denise, thank you on the mask. Uh, so this, this dress, um, it was a lot of work because I hadn't done one before um, like this and out of this kind of material. But now that I've done it once, the second time will actually be quite easy because I know exactly what to do. Um, what kind of earrings am I wearing? I'm actually wearing them now. They're, they're kind of small. I have some little amethysts, so that's what I'm wearing. I don't, I don't want to wear anything bigger. If I had something that matched the tiara exactly, I'd wear it, but I figured these are probably the best thing. And I'm not wearing a necklace either, because um, I don't have an amethyst necklace, and I, I don't know. I don't want to do too much bling. I think uh, between the mask and the earrings and the tiara, it would be nice to have a necklace. I do like necklace, but but I don't want to overkill. And the same thing, I probably should wear gloves too, probably white gloves, which I do have. I have some, you know, um, opera, opera length gloves. That's probably what I should wear. So um, anyway, uh, this dress, if anybody wants one, uh, I can make them for other people now because I know what I'm doing. Uh, you want to hear a shocker? If you don't count the underskirt, which was a lot more fabric, but the dress itself, I only used five yards of fabric. That is it. Most um, bustle dresses and ball gowns take eight to 14 yards. I did this dress with five yards plus a yard and a half of this tool. I only had a yard and a half of this, and I had five yards of this embroidered silk. Now, I have an underskirt, too, so obviously that, I, I didn't count that, but um, if you count that, that was a different fabric, that was taffeta, that was probably another four yards, uh, because I did need it for uh, support for the dress, but here's the cool thing, this underskirt, I did not sew it to the skirt, I kept it as a separate garment, and now I can wear it, that I put that horsehair braid in, I can wear it as a um, underdress or a underskirt for anything else that I want to make. So um, I really got a lot of bang for my buck out of this. Uh, I'm planning to do something with uh, uh, a pretty dress with embroidered netting and this lilac um, underskirt would work beautifully for that. So um, Denise, with a neckline, I might not need a necklace. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's, it's got a lot going on. <laughs> this, this dress isn't subtle. <laughs> But I don't think it's tacky. I think it's I, I think it's very elegant. That's my opinion. And I tried to do a Victorian hairdo. What do y'all think? I did my best. They thankfully they did wear bangs in the Victorian era or fringe, as it would be called in England. Um, so the curly bangs worked, and um, I am wearing a hairpiece mixed in with my own hair, so it wasn't that hard to do. And I think it looks pretty Victorian. I'm happy with the result. I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, so, as I was saying, if anybody else is interested in uh, this kind of a dress, it's a natural form era, which was part of the Victorian era. It was the 1880s, earlier part of the 1880s. Uh, this style was in fashion for about five or six years, and then it went back to the great big bustles. Um, this era was more about the trains. I am wearing a very small bum pad, but not a big bustle. Thank you, Sherry, on the hair. I, I did my best. I'm not a good hairdresser, but I, I really wanted to do my best to try to give the complete look because I really hate it. Hate it. Can I say hate it? <laughs> when I see um, a historical gown and contemporary hair, it drives me crazy. I just hate that. Because, I don't know, it just ruins the magic to me. It, it totally ruins the magic. I think, uh, for me at least, when I get dressed up, I want to try to be in the era. So I try to do everything appropriate. I try to do, in this case, I'm wearing heavier makeup because it's meant to be a little bit more theatrical because it's a masquerade. But um, I try to go kind of light on the makeup and do the makeup a little bit more naturally. Um, I try to do the hair. If I can't do the hair, then I will try to style a wig that uh, is appropriate because my hair is kind of hard to curl. And it's hard to put it up by myself. Um, so, you know, I, I, I've done a lot with wigs. Um, Lori, what about a deep purple neck ribbon? Oh, um, yeah, I don't know. 
if they wore them. I know they did in the um, colonial times or 18th century. I mean, I do have the same, I do have some ribbon of the same purple. I, I could do that. Um, yeah, a choker, I suppose they would wear. Uh, if Maybe I could pin a, a brooch to it or something if I had something that, that matched. You know, okay, you gave me something to think about. Ooh, I could put one of these roses on a ribbon maybe unless it's too much. I'll have to try it. Maybe one of these, I have a couple of these purple roses left and I do have some purple ribbon. So maybe if I um, sew the rose to the ribbon and try that, I think I have seen that before. So I'll, I'll try it. Um, oh, and Babe said the same thing, a simple purple ribbon like a choker. Um, yeah, yeah. So I do have this same um, purple ribbon. I'll have to give it a try. Uh, Joby, um, I'm gonna try the tiara. If I, like I said, if I do the tiara, I won't do it with the mask. I won't. I pro, I doubt I would wear the two together. But the tiara would be really pretty without the mask. Um, Denise, thank you, thank you. She says it is elegant. You pull it off quite nicely. Thank you very much. Hey, Phyllis. Uh, Barb, thank you, thank you. I, I'm glad you like the mask. I, the mask was. Like I said, it was kind of an afterthought, but I think it worked really well. Uh, wear the rose off to the side. You mean in the hair? Well, yeah, I was looking for a place to put it. So anyway, it's it's there for now. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I could do that. Um, smaller rose, uh, I'd have to tear one of these apart because I'd, I'd want it to match, uh, be the same color. Uh, thank you, Desiree. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. So there is a costume contest. This is for the Gilded Age Masquerade at the Biltmore Estate a week from Saturday. And I can't believe I got this dress made. Um, I still have other dresses to make for other people, but it was important for me to get this done because I really did want to attend the masquerade. See, now the thing's falling out of my hair. All right, so I'll, take, I'll just take it out. Um, given my, um, dressmaking endeavor and, uh, given that the Biltmore is less than two hours from where I live, there's like no way I could miss it unless my husband refused to take me. But he was such a good sport and he's so sweet and I adore him and he enables me. <laughs> so, um, tomorrow I need to get his tuxedo shirt clean, take it to the cleaners. He's going to wear just a black tux. He looks fabulous in the tux. He dresses up really, really well. Oh, um, oh, Sherry, you're talking about on the choker. I thought you meant in my hair. <laughs> yes, I could do that, maybe. I'll try it. I should win. <laughs> well, we don't know who's going to be there. There could be some really, really fabulous costumes. But I don't think it's too shabby. I I'm not ashamed of it, that's for sure. So, um, anyway, sorry I was a little late getting started, but it took me a while to get ready. I've been working on this uh, all afternoon because um, I had to finish the skirt. I didn't get the horsehair braid till, did it just come? It came last night. It came late yesterday. And I wasn't sure what to do with it, so I had to sew it into the skirt today. So that took some time. And then I had to make dinner, and then I had to do my hair, which took some time. So, um, but I got it all done. So I'm ready to go. It's going to be fabulous. Um, so I am going to plan to get lots of pictures at the Biltmore. I am going to plan, I'm planning to take one or two more dresses just for photography purposes. You know, I, I am going to put something on when I go walk around the house on Saturday, uh, the Biltmore house. Uh, we will be going, they're doing a new a Gilded Age exhibition. So I will wear my late Victorian, oh, it's purple also, it's plum actually. I'll wear my plum outfit in the house and then I'll probably take one other thing just to wear around and about. I don't know. I'm sure we'll go to dinner Friday night. I don't know what I'll wear to dinner. Hmm, I have to think of something. You know, I, th I might wear my purple dress I made for the Phantom of the Opera last year. That's purple also. I made a purple velvet dress. It's uh, kind of a nine, 1930s inspired, but it's something that I can actually wear out to dinner. 
So maybe I'll take that with me to wear to dinner Friday night. Oh, I'll wear all purple. There we go. So I'll wear the purple velvet dress Friday night. I'll wear the plum taffeta uh, Victorian walking dress for, for you know, sightseeing in, in the house. And then I'll wear this for the party Saturday night. <laughs> that makes it easy to coordinate my makeup. I'll take everything purple. <laughs> what kind of shoes am I wearing? Well, the ones I'm wearing right now are not historically accurate because... The skirt was a little bit long, so I had to wear a higher heel. But I, I have some really pretty shoes. Let me point the camera down. I'll show you guys my shoes. Let's see. All right, so here's my shoes. I don't know if you can see them. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in. They're gold. They're gold with little rhinestones, and I don't have my toenails painted. So I guess I have to do purple toenails. But yeah, that's the shoe I have on because I needed a heel. Um, for this dress because my skirt was a little too long and I'm not taking the dress apart to shorten the skirt I don't care nobody's gonna see the shoes anyway so I'm gonna wear just whatever shoe works <laughs> uh, Lori take and share lots of pictures yes I always do I'm really good about sharing pictures <laughs> um, thank you Diane this this was really a lot of fun it was a big challenge uh, this outfit was a big challenge because uh, I had to wing it on the uh, fabric. I told you before, this uh, material can only be cut in one direction. And, you know, all the embroidery is on the edge. So I really had to play around with it a lot to be able to get this trained skirt out of it, especially since it was only five yards. So, um, oh, thanks, Sherry. I'm glad you dropped by. Good night. Sherry's logging off. So um, I had to play around a lot with the material, but now I know what I'm doing with it. So uh, it was it was a challenge, but it was fun. And then uh, now I'm working on another challenge. I'm doing a dress for Colonial Williamsburg. I started Jane Charles's dress, uh, which is a brown and gold brocade. And I'm doing something for her from the 1730s. So it was uh, right before the side hoops came into fashion. So it is with a, a regular round hoop skirt, but it's a, a really pretty, very rich looking uh, gold and brown brocade. Uh, so I hope to make her a really beautiful dress. I got it started. The, pe the gold silk petticoat is done and it's real silk. It's really pretty. And I'll get the rest of it. I was going to work on it today, but I had to finish the skirt for this dress because... I promised you guys I was going to wear it. So anyway, uh, that's why I didn't get more done on Jane's. But I should have Jane's dress done. Hmm. I have a hair appointment tomorrow. I'll have it done by Sunday at the very latest, maybe by Saturday. So that's kind of cool. And then uh, I've got several more to make. Time is ticking away. It's almost February. So Colonial Williamsburg, if you guys want to join us, there is still an opportunity. There are still 30 tickets remaining romancingwilliamsburg.com. It's also listed on Eventbrite. Um, the cost is $125 registration. Um, our hotel room allotment at the group rate is sold out, but there are still rooms at the hotel, and there are people who are staying off-site, and there are people, I think, who are looking for roommates. So if you're interested, if you'd like to go but are, are concerned about the cost of the room, there are people um, who are still looking for roommates, and if you go to the Facebook page, it's Colonial Williamsburg Author Reader Group, um, just post that you'd like to attend and you're looking for a roommate, and I'm absolutely positive that um, you can hook up with somebody to be your roommate. It's going to be a wonderful event. We've got 20 authors, um, awesome authors. We're going to be doing uh, historical workshops, we're going to be doing an afternoon tea with a full 18th century, a full century of fashion. We're doing a fashion show. We're doing a, a guided walking tour, actually two. We're going to split up into two smaller groups. Uh, a couple of guided walking tours of Colonial Williamsburg. Um, there's different authors doing workshops. If you go to the website and look at the schedule, you'll see who's doing what. Ooh, and I forgot to take off Sabrina Jeffries. Sabrina Jeffries will not be attending because she has a, a family situation that she's having to deal with. So she did have to cancel. So um, please remember that. 
and I forgot to take her off the, I took her name off, but I didn't take her off the schedule of events. So, um, but the list of authors is on the website, romancingwilliamsburg.com. There's a schedule of events. It's going to be a wonderful time. It's March 14th to the 17th, so it's coming up pretty soon. And I hope you guys will join us. It's going to be really fun. Thank you, Elle. Hey, Becky. I see Becky. And anybody else join me in the last few minutes? I don't want to miss anybody. Denise, did I say hello to you and Hilda? So I guess I will log off now and take off this corset. It's laced really tight. Um, I was trying to get an hourglass shape. <laughs> so I told my hubby, I said, don't lace me too tight in the bust, but cinch that waist in really tight. And he's really strong. And I think my kidneys moved to a different location. Uh, so <laughs> I have to take shallow breaths. All right. Uh, hey, Jerrica, did you see my gorgeous ball gown? <gasps> oh. Okay, so um, you'll have to watch the video to get the full view. Although, um, I'm going to have Hubby take some photos now, some still photos that I'm going to post. So, uh, all right. I'm going to say goodbye for sure, and I will catch you all later. Have a great night. Thank you for joining me. Ta-ta.